I use a stand mixer with the dough hook. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can easily use a large bowl with a wooden spoon. Um, I think wooden spoons work better just because they're stronger, but really any spoon would do as well. You need five to six cups of whole wheat flour. You could also do a mixture of white flour and whole wheat, or just white. Um, I've definitely used high gluten bread flour and all-purpose flour. Um, one tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons, one and a half, two tablespoons of yeast, three tablespoons of honey, two cups of hot water between 100 and 115 degrees. If it's more than 115 degrees, it's probably going to kill your yeast. And if it's less than 100, it's probably not going to activate it enough. So then I find it helpful to have a thermometer, a small whisk, you're measuring spoons, a scraper is nice when you're working with the stand mixer, and then having some olive oil or butter and a larger bowl for the bread to rise in as well. So to get started, I add my salt to my flour. I give it a loose mix just so that it's kind of blended in a little bit when I'm mixing it in. You then need to add three tablespoons of honey to the water and quite honestly this doesn't need to be exact. I just kind of do three scoops and then I let my spoon rest in the water while I get my yeast out. So then for your yeast, I usually do one and then a little bit more, so it's somewhere between one and a half and two. Um, probably closer to two. And then using a small whisk or even a fork, you can just blend this together. Um, if you didn't want to use honey, you could also use regular sugar. I find that the honey works just as well. Um, and what you really want to do is mix these up so that you can activate the yeast. And once this is all blended, you're going to let it sit mm, for a few minutes until it forms a frothy head, kind of like on a beer. Um, so in this bowl, it's a little small, but it'll probably be ready to overflow. And so this looks really well blended. I can't see any granules of yeast, and there's no honey sticking to the bottom anymore. So I'll just let it sit for a few minutes. While I do that, I'll just check to make sure that I have my stand mixer all set up and that I have a warm place set for my bread to rise. been a few minutes and as you can see my yeast has finished proofing. I have maybe like an inch of um, head on the top. So what I'm going to do is just pour it into my stand mixer and working with about a cup of sugar at a time I'm going to add my flour mixture into my yeast mix. So I find it easiest or best to just keep the stand mixer on the lowest setting for now and once I see that most of the flour has been fully blended in, then I just add another cup. And I just use the custard dish that I had the salt in, but um, you could use just a measuring cup to add it in. So now I'm starting to get a little bit of flour on the side, and I just use my scraper. And I push it all in. Now same thing, if you were using a large bowl with a wooden spoon, you could just use the spoon and mix, blend it all in. Um, and at the same time, be scraping the sides to prevent the flour from sticking. And I've used both, and they work equally well. So it really doesn't matter, matter whether or not you have a stand mixer. Now again, I have more flour on the sides, but it's getting to be pretty large. So sometimes I have to turn it off to scrape the sides, which is fine. And then I'll be able to add a little more flour. So it's looking like I have a pretty good dough mix, but if I touch it, it's still really sticky, which means I should, I'm going to add this last little bit. And I've actually made this 
dough res bread recipe enough to know that I need pretty much exactly five cups. So now this is looking all pretty well blended. Um, so then what I like to do is take the hook off and I, I like to touch it just a little bit before I dump it out to make sure it's not too sticky. And then I just turn it out onto the counter. Um, and I knead it by hand the rest of the way. Um, you knead it until the dough's done, and you know that it's done when the surface of the dough begins to blister a little bit. And there's also a little poke check. Um, and once you've done it enough, you'll begin to feel what the dough feels like um, when it's finished, which is usually kind of like a, a silky, soft silky. Um, it's best to kind of push the dough out and bring it back in and then just kind of turn it. Um, there's definitely like a pull and fold method. I find it easier to do this because otherwise my arms get too tired. Um, so the surface of my dough is beginning to blister. If you use two fingers and push down, you want your dough to spring back. Um, mine dimpled and it sprang back a little bit, but I'm going to need it just a little bit more. Um, because I know that normally my dough springs back a little quicker than that. And as you go, you can really feel the texture of the dough changing. Um, the next step will be to allow the dough to rise until it doubles in size. Um, to do that, you need to coat the dough in a fat. I always use olive oil. You could easily use butter, though. Um, I just run the olive oil around the outer rim of the bowl and let it drip into the middle, and then I just kind of spin my dough around. And I'll just kind of rub it until the top of the dough is coated. And then, just using a towel, cover it up, and put it in a warm place to rise. Um, mine usually takes about an hour to double in size, but it could take anywhere from one to three hours. So just be patient, check on it after an hour, see where it's at, and we'll go from there. Now my dough has doubled in size. Um, so you can just punch it down and then turn it out onto your counter. Um, so I like to just kind of make it into one fairly uniform shape because it's easier to cut that way. But then what you would do is shape it into two loaves. I've actually found shaping it into four loaves is easier for me because I'm the only one eating it. So if you were doing two loaves, you would cut it in half. I do four. So I cut it into four pieces, and then you can just let it rest for a minute. We then need to sprinkle our board, or if you were using a pan, your pan, um, we use a breadstone. So I put all of my bread dough onto a wood board. However, if you were going to bake your bread onto a pan, you would just sprinkle cornmeal onto your pan. So, now that I have my board sprinkled, I will take a chunk of my dough and I just press it flat. You don't need to use a roller or be exact. And I try to get it to be about a foot long. And just pressing it so it feels pretty even throughout and into a longer rectangular shape. And it's kind of harder with these smaller loaves. And then, so now I have a fairly rectangular shaped piece of bread dough. And what, you, what you'll do is just take one of the long edges and roll it. Press it down once it gets flat and curl your ends under. And then you can just set it on your board.
make sure it has cornmeal under it so it doesn't stick. Then you'll continue that process with the rest of your pieces, whether it be one more or three more. Now, if you don't want to take the time to actually roll these, you could really just kind of roll them in your hands, but what you end up with is creases that kind of expand as they're baking, and your bread's not as aesthetically pleasing, which I guess really doesn't matter, but those creases also tend to break apart when you're cutting it, so I find this to be the easiest method. So again, I have a rectangle, and you just roll. Once it's sitting flat, you kind of push it, push it down. And curl your ends under. So then your next step is going to be to slit your bread. And I find if you just have a pretty sharp bread knife, you do three or four slits. So then your bread ends up going into a an unpreheated oven. So I actually set these right on my stone and I let them rise for about another half hour. So I'm going to put these in and patiently wait another half hour. So now my bread has been rising on the breadstone for almost a half hour. I'm going to brush the tops of each loaf with about a tablespoon of egg white and a tablespoon of water. If you didn't have any eggs, you could just use, sprinkle it with some water. You could even use your hand if you don't have a brush. Um, the water is going to help you have a crispier crust, and the egg really helps it turn brown and shiny and looks pretty. <laughs> um, but the egg is definitely not necessary. I've done it without, and I've done just water, and it's fine. Just, the crust doesn't come out as dark. So now what I'll do is I will close my oven. And I will set the temperature to 400 degrees and set the timer for about a half hour. So my timer has just gone off and I'm going to pull my bread out. As you can see it's gotten darker. Um, the real way to check if your bread is done is to turn it over and give it a knock and it should sound hollow um, so obviously that sounds hollow so I'm just going to remove these put them on a cooling rack and let them cool completely um, if you would like to freeze your bread I find the best way to freeze it is to just keep a big sack of bread on a pill in a pillowcase I wrap it up really well just twisting it shut and wrapping it around itself and then I just freeze it. When you're ready to reheat, wrap it in foil, reheat at 325 for about 20 minutes, and you're good to go.